All right, I'm the Flight Rate Master, and today we've got a case study on a 2015 Fusion. 2015 Fusion, we got a PO171 lean code. All right, so here is our lean code. This is a history code. I've since cleared the codes, but we have a PO171. A couple things about this car it is a 2.0. EcoBoost, it is a map car. It is not a mass airflow sensor car. As you can see, it only has a two wire air temp sensor going into the air cleaner assembly. I've honestly, I've never seen a lean code, a PO171 on a map sensor car. Map sensor cars don't actually measure airflow. Airflow, a mass airflow sensor monitors airflow coming into the engine and that's how it calculates incoming air. A MAP car, manifold absolute pressure, does it by vacuum. So when you have a vacuum leak on a MAP sensor car, you normally have a elevated idle. Usually that's the code you get when you have a vacuum leak is a high idle code. I don't have that, I just have a lean coat. Now I've been messing around with this car for a couple days. Came in yesterday. Um, we'll talk about what I've done so far, but that's where we're at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and crank up the car and we're gonna see what she does as far as fuel trims. All right, quick tip, if you've got a push button ignition and you know, you obviously got to go in there, push the brake pedal to get it cranked up. Quick tip is to use a pedal depressor to push down the brake pedal so you can just reach in and hit the button. Really helpful on diagnostics where you've got to shut the car off, restart the car and all that. So I'm gonna put this in first. shot. All right, so I've got the vehicle running right now and as you can see our long term is 24.21 and our short term right now is negative. But I can tell you from experience that's going to go away after it warms up a little bit because I've been dealing with this for a little while. Now, there we go, back down to zero. And then we'll start climbing up a little bit. And we've got 27, 26% fuel correction. That's not good. All right, I went ahead and shut off the vehicle because I don't have the doors open, I don't have the exhaust pipe on it, and screws with, with the audio. So we're gonna talk about what I've done so far. Now on a test drive, when you go full throttle, it does come off a lean up per the O2 sensor and the air fuel ratio sensor. So it has the ability at full throttle to not be lean. Anywhere else driving, it is lean. Fuel trims stay. When I started diagnosing it yesterday, my fuel trims were over 30% on the long term and bouncing up, you know, upwards of, of like 32, varying between all that. Now the history on this vehicle, as I bounce around, about 10,000 miles ago, it came in with a drivability complaint different than this one came in stalling, not wanting to stay running, and I diagnosed it and repaired it with a low side fuel pressure sensor. It drove fine, no check engine light, it was fixed, shipped it. It came back yesterday with these, this lean coat. Confirmed it was lean. I went ahead and test drove it with the scan tool hooked up. Confirmed it was lean except at full throttle. At full throttle, it's able to provide enough fuel, but anywhere else, it's not. Now, with that in mind, I went ahead and added 
brake clean to the intake, and I, I'd love to, to show you, but it's hard to get brake clean in this intake because of how it's set up. It's a turbo car, and you don't want it on the turbo side of the engine, so really hard to add fuel, but when I did that, it did correct fuel trims. It went to the rich side. So I wasn't, you know, so from there, I went ahead and checked low side fuel pressure, compared it against the fuel sensor that I put in, you know, a while ago. They were reading relatively accurately. I went ahead and did a fuel sample, did an alcohol test. Fuel sample looked fine, did an alcohol content, and it was at 10%. Did a, you know, bench burn test of the fuel. It is able to burn. So, for the most part, I've ruled out a fueling issue as far as on the low side. I still hadn't ruled out the air fuel ratio sensor, the downstream O2 sensor, or the high side. Talking to my YouTuber friends who are automotive technicians, Chad, the practical mechanic, Mario, Super Mario Diagnostics, and PJ over at Voltage Drop Diagnostics, we were all talking this issue out, trying to figure out what was going on. And I'll put a link to all their channels in the video. Mario suggested a possible biased air fuel ratio sensor. Now, I wasn't convinced on that, but he suggested a unplug it test. Now, I'm never a fan of unplug it tests, but pulling hair out, so I figured I'd try it. Inconclusive, um, it went into open loop and was no longer fuel correcting, so I wasn't you know, I wasn't sitting there going, oh, this is my, my silver bullet. But I went ahead and pulled the trigger for the shop. The shop bought it, so no comments in the description. Went ahead and ordered an air fuel ratio sensor. It wasn't expensive. It wasn't a $300 sensor like some Toyotas and other cars use. It was a $100 sensor. Now, me sitting on this car trying to figure it out, or and i.e. rule out the air fuel ratio sensor being at fault, it was cheaper for me to spend the shop's money on an air fuel ratio sensor and put it in than to sit there and second guess myself or sell it to the customer. And I literally told my service writer, I ordered this, I'm not sure it's gonna fix it, so don't sell it to the customer. It was cheaper for me to do that than to sit here and spend, you know, a couple hours second guessing myself on an air fuel ratio sensor because we all know they can be difficult to diagnose. Went ahead and put it in, it didn't do anything. Uh, after I put it in, I went ahead and unplugged the rear O2 sensor and didn't do anything either. It actually stayed in closed loop. It did not change my fuel trips. They stayed adding fuel. Okay, so this is getting interesting and mind-numbing. Now, side note on the service information that I have available to me through all data and Identifix. No fixes on Identifix for this car, and the service information from Ford was basically generic fuel trim trouble tree. It, it was pulling my hair out because they wanted you to check vacuum leaks and this and this and this. <clears throat> Another thing I checked that I skipped over that I just remembered was I did actually disconnect the purge valve and disconnect the line to it and the connector to it and verified that it wasn't stuck open or stuck closed. It does work, it does operate as designed so ruled that out as a possible you know, issue there, even though I knew that shouldn't set a lean coat on this car. The guys are as helpful as they can be, but they're all pretty much you know, running stumped. Chad knows of a, on an a ex escape with this engine that there's an issue with map sensor, barrow sensor, and the boost sensor being skewed by a harness issue. So I went ahead and key off, compared those. 
They all matched within point one or something like that. Unplugged them both. They both, you know, went open. You know, the scan tool reacted. So I knew those sensors were at least reading per the service information I had accurately. So where do we go from here? I know I've got a fueling issue. I know something's not right with the fueling on this vehicle. So where do I go from here? Well, I did another shotgun part. Just kidding, I did a calculated guess, high side fuel pressure sensor. Now, again, pretty cheap. My labor, you know, we're not, we weren't charging to this, this to the customer unless it fixed it. Well, when I put it in, it actually changed my fuel trim numbers. When I put it in, my fuel trim numbers actually went negative like they did when I initially started up the car, which it wasn't doing before I put this sensor in. It still skews high, but it's skewing less now. Because when I initially started, it was over 30% correction. Now I'm in, you know, 25, 27. So I think I've got my silver bullet. Except one of the things I tested was fuel injector flow. Now the Autel does not have it that I have found, but my Snap-on did, give it to them, a injector flow test for the injectors. I ran it per Snap-on, the spec is 140 PSI or whatever, however they put it, but it was 140 was the known good, and three of the four injectors hit 140, dead on, and one was like 134, 137, which was in the 15% margin of error for a good injector. So that doesn't help me now, does it? We shall find out tomorrow whether or not this is fixed. Because first off, I have a high pressure fuel pump in stock. So wondering if this is gonna fix it. We'll put this in first, and then we had to order overnight four injectors. So we'll see this fixes it or the four injectors fix it. All right, so I will install the high pressure pump and fuel injectors tomorrow in stages, see which one fixes it. Um, it is, because it's easier to do, I'm probably gonna put the high pressure pump in first. Both have been sold to the customer, so Cross your fingers, hopefully it'll fix it. I will make sure and at least take pictures of the updated fuel trims to make sure it is repaired and hopefully it'll be fixed. All right, so I am editing the Fusion video and I'm gonna do the recap on it. Uh, install the high pressure pump. That did not change anything removed the intake and uh, posted pictures of the carbon that was built up, which in the picture you'll see is does not, it's not anywhere near as bad as it looks from the borescope, but went ahead, cleaned it, reinstalled the intake and redid fuel trips. No effect. So finally my injectors came in installed them and immediately I had fuel trim corrections and on final test drive the fuel trims are a little high at idle about 14 percent which shouldn't set a check engine light on cruise and driving around they're pretty much right around zero unfortunately I did not get a shot of that but fuel trims are good had it test driven by our porter Everything's good to go, we shipped it. So that is a fix, it is the injectors. So we did some uh, finagling on the bill for the customer. I lost my butt, me and everybody else learned some stuff, but yes, it was definitely the injectors. So thanks for watching. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Comments, let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching, I am the flat rate master.